The former first lady sat down for a podcast interview where she was asked, what keeps you up at night? Those yeah. are the things that yeah. keep me up because you, you don't have control over them. Mm -hmm. And you wonder, where are people, where are we in this? You know, where are our hearts? What's going to happen in this next election? I am terrified about what could possibly happen because our leaders matter. Who we select, who speaks for us, who holds that bully pulpit, it affects us in ways that I, sometimes I think people take for granted. You know, the fact that people think that government, eh, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't really even do anything. And I'm like, oh, my God, does government do everything for us? And we cannot take this democracy for granted. Hmm. Well, what about when you say this at the bully pulpit? Uh -oh. Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans represent an extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic. Trump and his MAGA supporters not only embrace political violence, but they laugh about it. He calls those who oppose him vermin. He talks about the blood of America as being poisoned, echoing the same exact language used in Nazi Germany. And yet, an extreme movement of America, the MAGA Republicans, led by a defeated president, is trying to steal history now. Hmm, well, so much for this foul, I guess. When someone is cruel or acts like a bully, you don't stoop to their level. No, our motto is, when they go low, we go high. <laughs> Except for Joe. But then again, are we surprised? She did tell us she wasn't proud of America until her husband became president. For the first time in my adult lifetime, I'm really proud of my country. And not just because Barack has done well, but because... I think people are hungry for change. I have been desperate to see our country moving in that direction and just not feeling so alone in my frustration and disappointment. So Kennedy, she's only proud when her husband's president. That's the first time. When they go low, we go high, except Joe, who said MAGA is a clear and present danger. I mean, my head's spinning. She wants to run. So this is her way. Now that she's talking about politics, if she were really concerned about the future and the tenor of the country, she would be on the campaign trail with Joe Biden. She is just as concerned about him as she is about Donald Trump. So this is her way of sending out a, a little canary into the coal mine to see if it lives. And I think this could be the beginning of her campaign. I mean, Dr. Siegel, to that end, you have the Wall Street Journal, Doug Schoen, smart guy among the Democrats. If Biden bows out, how about Michelle Obama? And he goes into her popularity rating higher than Hillary Clinton. I mean, it's not a bad supposition. I think Kennedy is on to something here. By the way, the Democrat uh, convention is in Chicago, so that would be a great coming out party. Mm -hmm. And the whole notion of saying we're afraid of the other guy. By the way, he, she could mean we're afraid of Biden, too. We're afraid of him stumbling, not remembering what he's saying. You know, she could be afraid of how presidential Biden is right now, plus her fear of the other Trump. I don't particularly like that approach at all. I wrote a whole book on fear and fear mongering and how that's not how to bring this country together. Talk about the issues. What about the border? What about the economy? You don't want to talk about those things, so you make everyone afraid of the other guy. And she also seemed to insinuate that President Trump is getting a sweetheart deal with his legal matters. Listen to this. Other people can be indicted a bunch of times and still run for, for office. Mm -hmm. Black man can't. You just learn to be good. And in the end, you benefit from that extra resilience. So, sweetheart deal for Donald Trump is the insinuation, Emily, except let's just look at the Alvin Bragg case. One of the four New York Times review and interviews with election law experts strongly suggests New York state prosecutors have never before filed an election law case in involving a federal campaign. I assume the Obamas hold the New York Times in high regard. Unprecedented. Right. For the first 234 years that this country existed, no president was actually, uh, no former, no American president or former president have ever been indicted. That changed this last year when President Trump was charged in four different criminal cases by the beginning of December. So the notion or the argument that he is somehow getting away with something um, is preposterous and it's laughable. And then you contrast that with that, as you just articulated, that there are novel cases being bought, bringing 
being brought, that Alvin Bragg has brought cases we've never seen before, not only in life, but in this context. Uh, it is so preposterous, and I know that she has a sounder legal mind than that, and I thought she was more rational than that, because this is so absolutely ridiculous. And final point real quick, when she talks about it matters who speaks for us. The person speaking for her right now, that speaks for all Americans right now, told her that she wasn't black or she wouldn't be black if she hadn't voted for him. Mm. So I think that there's a two-way street, how preposterous and mm. frankly disheartening it is, who is speaking for whom. That person also was at Mother Emanuel AME, right, during the live coverage of this program of, of President Biden telling that audience that he'd been inside of a black church more than most of some of the black people in the audience. I mean, he's been every ethnicity that he, he isn't. Uh, he's like Elizabeth Warren with skates on. I don't really get it. But I can tell you this, it's not an, it's not an unimaginative move for them to try to run a black woman against a, a black Indian woman. They know they've got to play woke. They know they do. Democrats <clears throat> cannot just skip over Kamala Harris and keep it going, because he bullied her. Be on the lookout for a black woman as vice president. Oh yeah, he did. You think he liked her after that debate when she called him a racist? I'm going to say he didn't. So there she is in a place where she couldn't really hurt him, and especially if he sidelines her by letting her fail and doesn't even try to help her. I mean, where is the remuneration of gift there? Like, she campaigned with him. She was on the ticket. She scooped up some vote of color, and he's still going to James Clyburn in South Carolina talking ineloquently about issues around us. In fact, his biggest issue in the party right now is understanding how different brown and black people really are. He's at a Christian church. He doesn't understand when half the pews stand up. They're supporting the Palestinians in Gaza right now, and they're booing and shouting him down. I mean, there's a whole host of things going on that if you just smacked an Obama sticker on it, and it happened to be Michelle Obama, that could solve a lot of problems for the party. Let's see if they're bold enough to do it. It'll be interesting. Yeah. Biden's been in the AME church more than most. He also grew up in the synagogue, he told us. Um, and he's Catholic, so he's been in more houses of worship than almost anyone. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.